Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms. Today I'm going to show you how to install the Curtis Advantage cab on a John Deere 2038R. So, this instruction will work basically the same if you are getting the Curtis Base cab, the Curtis Plus cab, or the Curtis Advantage cab. Because all three are basically the same cab. The difference is the doors, the back glass, and some of the features. Now I'm installing the majority of the optional features so that you can see all of those. And I'm actually going to show you through this channel all three sets of door options so that you can compare which of these three cabs is the best for you. According to the instructions, depending on your skill level, this install will range between five hours and seven hours. So the first thing I did before step one was to unbox everything, deal with all the packaging, kind of make sure it looked like everything was there, nothing was damaged. You know, here's our door, you can see the hood there, there's the front windshield. I've got everything set up here and ready to install. Actual step one in the instructions is to remove the fender work lights because you're going to remount those on the outside of the cab. Okay, so that pops off pretty easy with the screwdriver. Then this is a 13 millimeter on both sides. Pull that off. Put the nut back on it so that we don't lose it. All right, the next step is to remove these fender work lights. They are gonna be remounted further out on the outside of the cab. So that's also a 13 millimeter. Okay, and it says to pull out at least six inches of wire and that you might have to cut a zip tie to do that. On mine, I did not have that problem. I got plenty of slack in the wire. All right, the next step is to remove these clips right here. It calls them fir tree plugs. I guess when you flip these over, that is what they look like. Probably worth it to get some needle nose pliers. That is a more appropriate tool for this task. All right, so I've got these two clips out so I can pull that back. Now it looks like I remove this bolt and this bolt. This is a 14 millimeter, fits there, 15 millimeter here. This one has a nut on the bottom. Let's see if that's also a 15 millimeter. And it is. All right, so I'm gonna see if my drill bit's long enough to poke this hole from the bottom make it the easiest way to find it. All right, so I skipped ahead a little bit. We've got one side on. We've, you've got two of these parts right here that are identical. They're gonna go on to the back side of the ROPS. That's this piece here, and then your other side is going to go like this with the angle facing towards the outside. It's got cushioned rubber here and on the bottom. This will slide all the way down and set on your fender or on your console. So that's how you know how to line it up. Then you just line this piece up with that. There are two similar bolts. You use the longer bolts to go in right here. 
and then you use the button head bolts to attach this. As long as you've got six inches of wire here, the only struggle you'll have with this is getting enough wire pulled through to stretch over here. And the last step I have is to take a piece of the wire loom and put around this wire here to protect it. Alright, now we're putting on these main support posts for the back corners. It says do the left one first. The left side, when you're facing forward, will have the, the two sets of pins. This is for the back glass, and this is for the uh, door on this side. So, those screws I mentioned earlier, to use the long ones, for this we'll use the short ones with a washer and a nut. You've got three holes in this last bracket we put on and you'll use three of those shorter screws or they're actually bolts not screws. You'll use three of the shorter bolts in those three spots to attach these panels. Alright the next step is to take this T-handle right here loose but do not remove it by turning this uh, to counterclockwise, takes pressure off of the pin right here. And then you're going to pull the pin out. So, of course, you got to pull this uh, retaining clip off the back, pull the pin out. Then it says remove rubber washer. For, for whatever reason, mine didn't have a rubber washer. While you have the pin out, put this bracket, you put the pin through this bracket, put it back in, and then you're going to bolt the bracket on with the same bolts we've been using, which is the shorter of the 5 16 bolts. All of these bolts have a thick rubber washer behind them that's um, sealing out water, basically. Alright, so the next step is to set our A-frame on. We've already drilled the holes here and we're just going to put the same bolts back in that we took out. So I put the little retaining clips back in the rubber. Then you just line these up with the holes you drilled earlier. Push the bolts through and run them down. It says do not tighten them. Um, that'll be probably after everything's squared up later on. This is actually going smoother than what I expected. The next step is to set the whole cowl on. And these posts are threaded, so all you have to do is screw thumb screws in to hold this in place. Um, the next step is the front support panel. It's really just a bar that connects these two sides to hold the windshield in. Did say to leave these loose. All right. So then you've got the side supports to finish boxing this in. Use the same bolts. Thread might be damaged because it didn't want to start. Okay, you just have to force it. Alright. 
we are leaving all these bolts loose as we go so that it can still be shifted enough to line up and make the doors close properly. I actually had to go back and take the bolts loose on the rear supports because I tightened those and you're not really supposed to tighten any of the support bolts at this point. I'll run them down a little bit I think. Alright, we're getting ready to put the windshield in. You've got windshield spacers that holds it out to the right gap and then you got these flat headed screws that attach it. At this point you go ahead and put the screws in and don't tighten them down for the top of the windshield. Then you're going to put the bolts in for the bottom clasp on the windshield and those you actually can tighten down. So you lift up on the windshield then you close the clasp and tighten the bottom and then you tighten the top and that should have it held up. If you're not sure you can look at the slots on the back side of the top hinge. Now we're all right now we're prepping the roof to install. It's got holes all the way around it for attaching to the frame we've already built. It says from the inside poke a hole in this liner at each hole. You do it from the inside because if you're pushing from the outside it might pull the rubber away and you don't want to weaken the the hold that it has on the on the roof itself. All right, we've got 15 of these bolts that go through the roof into all of the other pillars we put up. Each one has one of these ceiling washers. It looks like a solid washer but they call it a ceiling washer because when it gets tight it'll smash down and really seal. All right. So you put the 13 bolts in the roof, then you got two in the back here. Everything is still loose on that. And then next step is putting on the back window. Get a little bit of grease on these pins. All right, so this just sets on like this. This will be the same way the door is set on in a second. Maybe you have to tap the, I mean, you don't want to tap it. It's like a, not aligned or something. All right, so after you grease it, then you put these brass washers on. They really think of everything. Every little detail so far has been well thought out. That moved really easily. I just barely tapped it like this and it slid inside of here, so that might have done it. Yeah. Right, do it and try it. Do it and try it. All right, so the first time I tried to do that, these didn't want to slide down on the pins. And just looking at it, it looked like this top one might have been angled up just slightly. And obviously, for those two pins to both slide on, they've got to be per perfectly um, parallel to each other. So I just barely tapped right here, with, lightly with the rubber mallet, and I could see it shift just enough that it slid on right. Yeah. All right, so everything else we left loose as we were going, except for the very first ones we put on, and those were tight. And so I wasn't able to close the window until I took those back loose. So basically everything right now except the front windshield should be loose. It says to pull this out until it's lined up with um, the edge of this. And I'd say we are, looks like maybe 3 16 of an inch, probably less than a quarter. This is in too far and I can't get it to push out. I've got everything loose. I've pulled on it, 
tapped on it right here with the dead blow hammer. I can't get that to pull out any further. It seems like the only problem that would cause is with the weather seal on the door not being tight right here. But we're going to go ahead and move on and then, you know, see how it affects it as we go. So the next step is to tighten all of the bolts on the cab that have been left loose up to this point. Alright, so the basic structure of the cab is all done. I'm thrilled with the way it looks so far. Um, now we're going to start putting on accessories. The first thing we go with is the windshield, the front windshield motor. Now we're ready to put the front windshield wiper on. This right here, shaft that comes out that turns your actual wiper blade, had this plastic washer then a rubber washer, plastic washer, and a nut. You take all the top part of that off. And then this plastic ring goes between the wiper motor and the glass. And see the that plastic washer sticking out right there. To protect the glass. Then, then we'll put the rubber washer plastic washer and the nut on the outside. Then your other hole in the glass is the same way. You put this plastic spacer in between the glass and the metal bracket. Then you put a quarter 20 bolt with this metal ring on it through the inside and on the outside you've got the same setup. Rubber washer, plastic washer, and a nut. Alright, so you're tightening this up onto glass. So obviously you don't want to put much pressure. Now this one doesn't even have a nut that you can lock onto. Which kind of shows that they don't want you to over tighten it. So now the window opens and closes with the motor on. It tells you not to put the wiper on until you wire up the motor and have everything working. And then you're going to cycle it and know which position the motor's in before you know how to place the wiper. The next step is supposed to be to wire this up, but I've got all the optional accessories and a little switch box, and I want to save it and do all the wiring at the end. I've actually got an electrician coming to kind of help me make sure I get everything set up exactly the way I want it. Um, because each of these components has a switch right on it. Like you can turn the wiper on and off right here. But I also have a controller with switches on it so that if I don't want to use the switches, especially, so this one's convenient right here, you might just use that switch. But with some of these components, you might prefer to have the controller, and that's the way I'm going to set mine up. So I'm going to save all the wiring until the end. The next step is installing the heater. So here we have our heater and the bag of accessories for the heater. And step one is to install the mounting bracket onto the side of the heater. Now this is going to attach to our A-frame with the same bolts we've been using for most of the other structural components. We're going to hook up the heater. First step is to drain the coolant. So I've put a, a wide pan underneath 
I try to just take this hose loose at the bottom and let it drain. All right, then we're gonna connect in up here, I'm pretty sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that hose back on so that that end is connected. All right, so after draining that fluid, the next step is to cut this hose and remove the MPT plug. And I had trouble finding it at first because I was confused by the picture. But if you come to this hose right here, here's your coolant and there's this belt then about an inch above the top of that belt, you have a plug. It's gonna take a large hex key, looks like maybe a 3 8 Allen, or if it's metric, I'm not sure what size. So the perfect tool for this is a long Allen socket. I don't have any. I could go buy some, but I think I'm gonna get this little cheater onto the hex key with it turned long way. So we're gonna replace that plug with this and that will have the other direction of the flow for the coolant hose to the heater. All right, so we've got thread tape on this. So I'm having a hard time tightening that little fitting down so right under it is an electrical connector. You can get a flathead screwdriver on the back side of it. You can pop that electrical connector off and see if I can get that socket on. Now, slide these hose clamps over each side. Next, we're just putting the T in that will run the hose up to the heater and tightening down the hose clamps. Then the fitting that we screwed into the engine will run the other direction of flow. All right, so we've got these little clips that go in the holes in the floorboard. Then you push a piece of hose through the inside, run it under, I ran it up next to the oil filter and then connected it to the T-fitting on that side. Then we cut it to length here and it connects to the inside hose. All right, so we'll put a hose clamp on here. Slide that up over the heater. Yeah. All right, so then we're gonna put the other hose through and it's gonna run up to that adapter that we screwed into the block. All right, so the hose clamp is hard to get on back here because I can't get a screwdriver into it. So I've got an eight millimeter socket with a quarter inch drive ratchet to tighten this down. All right, so this is the line we just ran up to the engine for the coolant return and we're going to cut into it right here and we're going to put this ball valve in with the two hose clamp on each side then in the summer you just close this so that nothing circulates and that allows you to use the heater as a fan so we'll go ahead and cut the hose and get this put on Alright, the next step is to put on the door strikers. If you have the hard doors, that's going to go on this way. If you have the soft doors, it's going to go on this way. So we're installing hard doors right now.
Then we're going to take the nut off of the back of the actual striker. And these washers and spacers will go behind the plate we just put on. All right, as I put the door on, the striker is not hitting the uh, door latch. It needs to, the door needs to shift that way just a little bit. So you take these bolts here loose. You can slide the door forward and back and tilt it a little bit up and down and get it lined up better. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, once you get the striker on, you take these bolts loose, pull the door over till it's lined up well with this frame. Then you need someone on the inside to hold a wrench while you tighten the outside. And while you're doing that, you're lining the door latch up with the striker and the striker's adjustable up and down. I have a little bit of a fitment issue that even with this weather seal, there's just a little bitty gap right there. And I could see this before I put it on, that when you just lightly put it up against, the bottom hit and top hit before the middle, which makes it where you have to kind of push the door to close. So if I'm guessing, we're going to have to take some of the bolts loose and kind of shimmy it around until we get a better fit. But I'll update you on that as I figure it out. Turns out it's actually designed to hit at the top and the bottom first before it makes contact in the center. That way when the striker and the door latch pull tight in the center, you have an airtight gap all the way down. So all I needed to do right there is adjust the striker backward so that when the door latches, we have a tight fit all the way up. So it looked like an issue, but it was actually an easy fix. All right, so the next step is to plug this wiring extension in, run it up the handle, and then under this support, there's a little bitty gap that squeezes between the rocks. And you run it around there and plug it into the light on the back side. Now I'm getting ready to switch this uh, switch right here to the Artillion one that mounts or where the switch is included on the ball and so I'll be removing this and rerouting this wire so I'm gonna leave this right here until I get that rerouted but this would slide if I didn't have that extra wire this would slide down in there and then you could run this right along that handle maybe even put some some shrink wrap or some electrical tape around that to hold it still and have it out of the way Then your wire comes out right here next to the ROPS, runs back to here. You bolt this little bracket on and then bolt your fender lights to that. I haven't put the nut on that yet, but that allows you to point it in any direction you want because your fender light swivels like this and then you can tighten it up where you want it, but then also this bracket will swivel, so I could point these forward or backward or however I need to. Now, I already had a set of lights up here that I got when I bought the tractor. I'm going to point these towards the front wheel and the side, and then I've got some other lights I'm going to put up to point straight forward and straight backward. All right, the next step is the liner that goes behind the seat. For an air seal it's got the one side of the velcro already on the liner so we're just going to install the other side of the velcro onto that but do not peel the sticky backing off of it yet all right so it looks like you put on each section cut it and put the next section and cut it and fit this all the way around and then we're going to set it in place before peeling the backer off. 
All right, so after putting the Velcro on, you're gonna flip this over where the sticky side is against the glass, and you still haven't pulled the backing off. Then you're gonna put the corners into the corners, below the handles, but ab above the seal on the back window. Then you're gonna fit it down this. This will hit right in that corner. The split will go across that lever. And this is gonna squeeze down in between here. And then on the other side, you're gonna have basically the same thing. And once you've got it in that position, you're gonna go through a little at a time and pull the backing off. I started in this corner and stuck it down that way and then worked my way down here. And then I did the other side and I did the back last because it's not a good surface on this back rear. But it's all stuck down there and I think it's gonna work good. So that is it for the cab install. I could just put the hood down, put the side panels on, and it's done. And I'm not done though because I've got some optional accessories that I need to mount. That includes the rear wiper, the dome light, the extra LEDs that go under the drip rail, and these rear view mirrors. So I went ahead and did this one and got a feel for it. I'll take you to the other side and show you how these are installed. All right, the install on these is really simple. You've got two holes right here. You use the shortest screws with washers and a lock nut and just screw this on right here. Then you use the next longer size to bolt this on. And then you're able to swivel this, uh, looks like 360 degrees, and then you can also swivel the mirror until you get them lined up the way you want them. Mounting these front facing LEDs is really simple. They just have a stud with a nut that goes through a pre-drilled hole. So after you tighten up the nut on the top, then there's an Allen screw with a nut on the back side that tightens up how firm the swivel is on the light. You tighten that and then you poke the wires into the inside of the cab through the holes in the top rail. All right, so now we're gonna do the dome light. This one will be really easy. It's just an LED with an on off switch on the side. Now since we're saving all of the wiring to do at the end, this one will only take about two minutes. So you poke the wires through one of the holes in this flat plate. Then there are three little, pla three little screws that attach this plate onto the dome light. So you'll screw this plate on, and then you've got this one hole sticking out. Well, we put 13 bolts into the roof, and you pick one of those 13 bolts, take the nut off, stick this up, and put the nut back on, and that holds your dome light. I'm gonna put it front middle, and obviously, it'd be really easy to move if you change your mind and you don't want it in the front middle, or you want it at the back or the side. So, yep, this one should be pretty easy. Well, it's a little dark in here, and I can't turn the dome light on, obviously, because I haven't wired it up yet. But there's where I mounted it, on this stud right here. The switch is right there. You've got the cable loom to run over here. Got the same kind of protector, or the shielding, for these wires. And then you can see those wires over there for the other front LEDs. We'll run those all down in one bunch. And I will show that in this video. All right, so the next accessory we're gonna put in is this switch block. It's got fuses in the back and you hook up all your accessories here. And then these will be your switches for your wiper motor, your rear wiper, front lights, dome light. And then there's labels that go up here for everything. So this hangs off of the existing bolts on the ceiling also. So you just bolt this bracket on to two of the existing bolts on the canopy, exactly like I did the dome light. And then once this is bolted up, you just slide your controller box inside of it and run screws in it. So I'll go ahead and get this put up too so it'll be easier to wire.
All right, so I just took that dome light back down. I'm gonna use the same middle bolt that I used for the dome light. And so I had to pull that back down to get access to it. And then I'll just use this one over here next to it. That gets this away from the side where I come in and out. So it's not obstructing the, that. And then having it in the front, I think is gonna give you the best access to it. Plus these bolt uh, spacings over here make it harder to use on the side. All right, so we've got the bracket up and that will hang right there and have all the controls. All right, so here's your controller that turns everything on and off. And then here's your dome light. So the rear wiper looks almost exactly like the front wiper. You got the same two nylon plugs. And then the rubber washer, plastic washer and nut go on the outside. All right, so we did that very light, obviously, because you're tightening onto glass. Same thing I said at the, on the front, that you don't want to put the actual wiper blade on here until you're wired up. We're going to wire everything at once. You cycle the motor. That lets you know for sure which position you're in and tells you where to position the wiper. Now we're installing the optional seal kit that just keeps air from coming in around your pedals. So you get four brushes that look like this. You put the flat side down. There's pre-drilled holes right here for this side. On the other side, you use self-drilling screws. There you can see how those, those brush seals are going to stop most of the draft coming up around your pedal. Now I am reinstalling the Artillion modular tool rack and toolbox system. I've got a lot of different components that I can put on this rack for different situations. All right, so I've got an electrician here that's gonna wire up everything that's installed. That's the only thing left is doing the wiring. While we're at it, I've got this upgraded control ball that puts the button right on it for the Artillion diverter. So we're gonna do that too. We took the body panels off the engine compartment. We took the loader off for easy access to everything. This is the heater wire, power wire that's being run through here. It connects directly to the alternator. And of course, before you start doing any of your wiring, you want to disconnect your battery. You remove the negative battery terminal so you don't have to worry about shorting anything out. All right, so this is the connections for the heater. It, it runs across here, comes up and your positive goes on the alternator and your ground wire goes onto this bolt on the alternator mounting bracket. So they supplied more wiring than we needed, which it's better to have more than less. Could have cut it off, but then we would have had to make new ends. So this is rolled up and out of the way where it's not gonna get hot. Then your heating and your windshield wiper wires 
attached to each other. That's all in the instructions. All the ends are already made. You just poke them together. We had some excess wire there too, and we fastened it to this line. Then we're going to tie all these back. Then you've got your switch right here for your fan. And then we've got a clip right here holding that in. That runs down to the slack you saw. And you want to make sure that you leave a little slack in here. There's two holes for zip ties. You leave some slack so that you can open and close your window without pulling your wiring out for your motor. So all of this is run off of that one power that we hooked to the alternator. And then that runs these two things. All of the lights and the wipers, I believe, are going to run to this controller here. Or the rear wiper will probably run to this. And the front wiper is on this wiring. So once we got the power on this, we cycled the motor and stopped it in the lower position. And then I put the wiper on right here. Then we'll turn it back on and make sure that that cycle is going to cover the full windshield. Because I can always reposition just by sliding this off so I haven't tightened the set screws yet. All right, now we're running the wiring for the rear wiper. We're using the existing bolts and zip tying the conduit up there. Alright, so we've used zip ties on the existing bolts to hold that conduit up there. And that is the line from the rear wiper up to the fuse box and control panel. Now the electrician is wiring up that fuse box. Your main power lines coming in. Here's your hot and your ground. They go on opposite ends of the back of this. So that screw is black, but you can barely tell. And then that screw is red. And then there's a jumper wire that goes from one to two. On this breaker box, on the back, all of the wires are hot inputs, except for the last one. And all of the ground wires run over to that one. Then each of the other ones is a hot in. The very first switch is a three-way, three-position switch for the heater. But since we ran our heater direct, I'm just we're just not going to use that switch. There we go. So the last thing we showed you was how the power wires connect on the back of this switcher box. Then there's little holes up here that we zip tied the conduit to and then run it down this post and self tapping screws to run it up the rest of the way down. Once we got further down, we already have line run here, so the two lines can just be zip tied together. And then it's going to poke through the weather sealing 
right here to get up into the where the ignition switch is. All right, what we decided to do for this wire, this is the main power wire. It's a heavier gauge that runs that switcher box. We just made a little hole right here so we didn't have to go out of the cab and then back up from underneath. I think this is kind of a simple solution and it runs over to the other side and that will hook in right here under the dash there's three bolts that are your your ground uh, this is the ground then this one is full-time power from the battery and then this one is from the key switch so these will be wired to only be on when the key is on so you don't accidentally run your battery down all right, so there's the finished look of the power wires for the switch box and the fuse box. It's got a 40 amp inline fuse in that this section right here. And then it's connected to the key switch. So everything that we run into that box will only be on when the key's on. All right, so now He's wiring up these top four sets of Artillion lights. If you haven't seen those before, you pull out on them and they swivel. So you can rotate them around and then of course they also adjust this way. He ran all of these in series so they're all connected to each other and then all of them will We'll come in and go on one switch on the controller up there. So once all these lights were connected to each other, he drilled a hole that's the same size as this conduit. I don't think that's going to cause much of a leak, but probably go ahead and put silicone around it anyway, just to make sure. But I keep calling it conduit. It's wire loom. These are the wires that come in from the front LEDs. There's a little rubber grommet that slides over it and pushes up to seal that hole. Everything is in wire looms within six inches of the controller and everything's hooked up. We've got labels on. All right, the last thing we did is I drilled a hole right here and fed this wire through that and made the connection to my previous wiring inside of here and now we have the new ball on here for the diverter we've tested everything out go key on dome light then front wiper that's front lights you can see them on the back wall uh, got the rear wiper up here rear lights then the front wiper is right here and the heater switch is you've got a high that's low that's high that's a heater it's also a fan if you shut off the coolant flow all right well everything's set up and working the way it's supposed to so I appreciate you watching this install video. Hopefully that's helpful to anyone who's considering buying this cab and doing the install themselves. I'm going to put links to a couple more of our videos on the screen right here, and I'll see you next time.